Well, it's well known that nearly every industry is held to account when their products cause harm or injury. Well, except one, the gun industry. The gun lobby, well, it spent millions and millions of dollars buying off politicians to shield themselves from any liability. Today, California is going to change that. They can no longer hide from the mass destruction that they have caused. I'll be signing a bill that will allow Californians to sue irresponsible gun manufacturers and distributors. If you've been hurt or a family member is a victim of gun violence, you can now go to court and hold the makers of these deadly weapons accountable. Our kids, families, and communities deserve to live without the worry of gun violence. And with Assemblymember Ting's bill, gun makers will finally be held to account for their role in this crisis. It is about time. Here, Governor Gavin Newsom is continuing his bout of leadership on the national stage by signing legislation in California to allow gun violence victims to file civil suits against gun manufacturers if their weapons are used in crimes. Now, there is already a federal law from 2005 on the books that protects gun manufacturers and dealers from lawsuits if their weapons are used in crimes, the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, PLCAA. But that law includes one exemption that would allow civil suits to proceed against gun manufacturers and distributors. But that law includes one exemption that would allow civil suits to proceed against gun manufacturers or distributors, and that is if they knowingly violate a state law regulating the sale or marketing of the product, and if that violation was a direct cause of the harm that the individual who brought the suit suffered. And that's what this new law, Assembly Bill 1594, does by, quote, utilizing an exemption to the federal statute that allows gun makers or sellers to be sued for violations of state laws concerning the sale or marketing of firearms. In other words, while Republicans ran through a relentless barrage of new measures that have only served to make gun violence exponentially worse, California Democrats are finding the creative solutions necessary to keep the people of that state safe. And when I say keep Californians safe, that's based on fact. California currently has one of the lowest per capita firearm mortality rates in the country. As of the most recently available data, California has the seventh lowest death rate in the US. California also has among the strictest gun laws in the country. Other states with the strictest gun laws in the US include Hawaii, Massachusetts, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, which just so happened to rank first, second, third, fifth, and sixth in terms of the lowest firearm mortality rates in the US. And just for fun, let's look at the states with the loosest gun laws. Mississippi Mississippi, Louisiana, Wyoming, Missouri, Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, South Carolina, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Kentucky. And you're not going to believe this, but those are the exact same states with the highest per capita firearm mortality rates in the U.S. So I wonder if there's a correlation between strict gun laws and low firearm mortality rates, or a correlation between loose gun laws and high firearm mortality rates. I guess we'll never know. California also has recently allocated $156 million in gun violence prevention grants to support tailored anti-violence programs in nearly 80 cities. Why? Because the state and its leaders understand that gun violence prevention doesn't just stop at thoughts and prayers. Gun violence prevention doesn't mean pivoting to talking points about mental health while actually cutting funding for mental health. Gun violence prevention doesn't mean relaxing laws on permitless carry or blocking background checks on the mentally ill. It means putting your money where your mouth is and actually seeking out and funding solutions to fix the problems. California and a number of blue states are doing that, and the results speak for themselves. I wish I could say the same about those red states with sky-high firearm mortality rates, but I can't. And by the way, this isn't the first time that Newsom's been in the spotlight lately. He's positioned himself as a foil to Republican governors like Ron DeSantis and Greg Abbott, who've used their positions of power to strip rights away from women, from LGBT Americans, from the poor, and even from Democratic constituents. And so Newsom's begun posting videos online, including on Truth Social, like these. On my first day in office, I signed an executive order to put California on the path towards creating our own prescription drugs. And now it's happening. California is going to make its own insulin. Nothing, nothing epitomizes market failures more than the cost of insulin. Many Americans experience out-of-pocket costs anywhere from $300 to $500 per month for this life-saving drug. California is now taking matters into our own hands. The budget, the budget I just signed sets aside $100 million so that we can contract to make our own insulin at a cheaper price, close to at cost, and to make it available to all. 50 million will go towards the development of low-cost insulin products, and an additional 50 million will go towards a California-based insulin manufacturing facility that will provide new, high-paying jobs and a stronger supply chain for the drug. Because in California, we know people should not go into debt to receive life-saving medication.
Hey everybody, it's Governor Gavin Newsom and we're all on this platform in search for the truth. And the truth is, there's no issue that drives so much of our anxiety more than the issue of jobs and the economy. But it's an interesting fact that GDP growth in California last year outpaced all red states in America. In fact, the fastest growing economies in the United States, top three, are all democratically led states. The question is, what is it about so many of the blue states and their economic success that Republican states are not considering? Hey everybody, it's Governor Gavin Newsom, and I know we're all on this platform in search for the truth, but the truth is I've not been able to find a simple explanation for the fact that we have a red state murder problem. Eight of the top 10 states with the highest murder rates happen to be red states. So the question is simple. What are the laws and policies in those states that are leading to such carnage? Hey everybody, it's uh, Governor Gavin Newsom, and Again, we are all here uh, with one thing in common, and that's the search for the truth. And the truth is, there was an analysis done recently of the 14 states with the highest COVID death rates. And they had one thing in common. They are all led by Republicans. In fact, you compare California, for example, to Florida, 52% higher death rates, COVID death rates in Florida than California. So my question is a simple one. How do we define pro-life? And these clips, of course, raise questions about Newsom's broader political ambitions. But on that, I should say that, A, I don't know what he or anyone else is planning on doing down the line, although it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest to know that a politician is seeking higher office. But B, I don't really care, so long as he's using his platform to take what is a worthwhile fight to Republicans. For too long, we've been guided by this governing philosophy on the left that bipartisanship and compromise is our end goal, all while Republicans are guided by a philosophy that Democrats don't even have the inherent right to get elected. The fact is that we are no longer a two-party system operating in a democracy. There is one party operating in a democracy, and the other seeking to install autocrats who will seek one-party rule by whatever means possible. And the longer that we refuse refuse to recognize that, the more we're actually helping Republicans achieve their goals. So good on Newsom for yet again taking on the fight, and I hope that other Democrats, from the State House all the way up to the White House, see the success that he's having and the attention he's getting by filling this void, and they move to do the same. Because the only way we're going to win is if we have people willing to fight. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on the screen. And to support my work beyond that, check out my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen, where I cover the week's most important stories and interview the biggest players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, and so many more. The link is also right here on this screen. And finally, to take action yourself and sign petitions on the most important issues, go to briantylercohen.com petition.